Okay, I think we could go ahead and get started. Uh, 안녕하세요. 저희 오늘은 um, 지금 아이샤 Maker's Place NFT 플랫폼 uh, NFT 마켓플레이스에서 마케팅하고 커뮤니티 리드를 맡고 계신데요. 오늘 아이샤 특별히 오시고 저희가 프로그램을 진행해 보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 근데 영어로 아마 진행이 될 거라서 어, 여기 함께 계시면서 들어보시고 중간 중간에 이제 어, 그러니까 슬라이드 보여주시면서 진행을 하실 텐데 중간 중간에 질문 있으시면 제가 이제 중간에 번역하고 그리고 또 이후에 이거를 올릴 때 제가 한국어로 좀더 쉽게 설명할 수 있도록 하여, 하여서 올릴게요. 오케이. 네, 네, 네. 그러면은 아이샤, are you able to introduce yourself to our artist here? Yes, hello everyone. Um, Dongli, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here chatting with you all today. Um, my name is Aisha. I am the community marketing lead at Maker's Place. Um, I've been at Maker's Place for two and a half years now. I started at Maker's Place in 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic when we were a team of about eight people We're a super tiny company, and now we are, you know, something like 55 people. Um, we've grown a lot, and uh, we're doing a lot of really cool stuff. Um, my main role there is I'm the community marketing lead. Um, and so what I do is a lot of stuff focused around in-person events. Um, I'm super passionate about bridging gap, the gap between the traditional fine art world, Um, and traditional institutions and the NFT community. Um, and, you know, I think a one really important way of bridging that gap is um, events, whether that's in person. Um, for example, Art Week Miami. I know that um, part of the program for some of the finalists, um, one of the prizes is that you would actually have your artwork shown at one of our events, um, Maker's Place events in Art Week Miami. Um, so that's really exciting. And then also, you know, online events like that in the metaverse, in um, places like Decentraland and Crypto Voxels. Um, I also work with um, spotlighting emerging artists and connecting them with collectors through curated exhibitions, which I'm going to talk about um, in this presentation. I'm really passionate about um, supporting underserved and underrepresented groups in the NFT community. Um, one of the big groups, um, you know, as many of you probably know, is we don't see um, as many women artists in the NFT space. Um, so one project that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about and that Dong Lee is actually a curator for um, is the Equal Bites and Excedrin uh, project, which is a, a women artist accelerator. Um, so that's really, really exciting. We've launched an African artist accelerator for artists that are based in Africa. Um, and we're so, so honored and excited to be a part of this um, artist sprint for Korean NFT. Um, it's definitely, you know, fits within our mission of um, onboarding more artists from around the world and, um, you know, supporting and, and bridging the gap. Um, So yeah, with that being said, I put together a little slide for you all, um, or a little deck for you all that explains a bit about Maker's Place, what we do there, and how we're kind of different from some of the other marketplaces. And then that talks about just kind of NFTs as um, rare digital art and how they benefit creators, how they benefit collectors, Um, and our approach to curation. So I'm going to see if I can share my screen. And I definitely want to be sure that um, I have time to answer any questions. So forgive me, I might like speed through this presentation a little quicker um, than usual. But if you have any questions that come up, feel free to just like type them um, in or just ask them, take your mic off um, at the end and I can answer them. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. Hopefully my screen is showing now. Dongli, are you able to see it? Uh, yes, it's perfect. Awesome, okay, cool. So let's see. 
Play. So a little bit about Maker's Place um, for any of you who do not know us, um, we are a curated platform, an online community for buying, selling, and collecting digital creations, also known as NFTs. Uh, we were started in 2018, um, but publicly launched in 2019. Um, so we've been here for a while. We're definitely one of the kind of OG platforms in the ecosystem. Uh, we were the first marketplace to ever accept credit cards, and we're also the first marketplace to ever partner with a traditional auction house. Um, and that was with Christie's for the Beeple um, $69.3 million sale, which I'm sure a lot of you guys heard about. Um, this sale was really huge for us as a company, um, just because it was a major sale and it helped us to get in front of a lot of um, traditional art collectors. Uh, but I think it was also just like a massive turning point for the NFT community and the NFT space um, because this sale is what really got mainstream media's attention. Um, and many of you may have heard of or experienced um, the NFT kind of boom where so many people um, kind of learned about NFTs, came into the space, and, you know, it just really went crazy um, last year. And so, you know, I think without this sale, um, that would have not happened um, or it would have taken longer to happen. So really proud to be a part of that. Um, and our mission at Maker's Place is we want to enable a vibrant future for digital creativity. The biggest thing with this is that we need to support artists and support digital creators. Um, otherwise, there is no future for digital creativity. Um, so, as I mentioned, a really, really big goal of ours is to bridge the gap between the traditional art uh, market and the digital art creation and collection. Please excuse that typo um, that's up there. Uh, but so a few of the ways that we're bridging gaps um, between these two worlds are, one, like I mentioned, we are the first platform to accept credit cards. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have an ETH wallet, although you can have an ETH wallet um, to buy something on Maker's Place. Uh, that's really huge just because a lot of collectors who are new to the space, they get, you know, really kind of nervous and scared about there's like, they're learning all of this new things. They're kind of coming into this new market and this new ecosystem. Um, where they may not be familiar with the technology, the terminology. Um, they're kind of taking a chance on NFTs and dipping their feet into this uh, waters. So it really helps to just kind of make it a little more seamless for them to allow them to buy with credit cards. Um, on the flip side for artists who are new to the scene, it can be just as scary. I think a, a lot of you may be artists who are kind of new to NFTs and learning about it. Um, and, you know, you know that there's so much to learn. Um, it's really like kind of taking in a new language almost. Um, and, you know, a big part of that and like something that can be very scary to artists is creating their um, wallets and managing their wallets. So Maker's Place, again, tries to like ease artists into this and make it more seamless and less scary by offering Maker's Place um, assigned wallets, or we call them custodial wallets. So basically the artist, you don't have to create a wallet if you and like worry about losing your key or worry about any of that stuff. Your wallet basically lives within Maker's Place. If you need anything to be changed or anything, um, something happens with your wallet where it's like hacked or something like that, we can actually help um, since we can kind of control those wallets. Um, then of course, whenever an artist is ready and wants to move on to just start publishing directly within their own uh, MetaMask or other type of Ethereum wallet, they are more than welcome to and they always can have that option. Um, and they don't even have to use the Maker's Place assigned wallets. It's just, say, an option um, in case artists feel more comfortable. Um, and then another way is, you know, we're really trying to be a platform that has a lot of educational resources, um, 
trying to have super solid support um, and, you know, just being there for artists so that any questions are getting answered um, and that we're kind of here to hold your hand through this new process of, of entering the NFT world. Um, so a few things that set us apart is one, um, like if you compare us to a marketplace like OpenSea, for example, um, OpenSea, anyone can go on there and create a profile and mint artworks. Makerspace is not like that. We are actually cur curated and every artist that is on our platform goes through a verification process. Um, so when I say curated, it means that artists either need to be invited or they need to apply. Um, and we do this because we are hoping to uh, maintain a certain level of quality for the art that is on the platform. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about curation in a side or two um, and how we approach it, just because there is this kind of balancing game between being a curated platform and offering high quality art and also functioning in a decentralized manner and in this decentralized community that we live in. Um, so I'm gonna get more into that in a moment. Um, another thing that sets us apart to say a platform like Super Rare is that we allow for um, additions and one of ones on Super Rare. There's only um, one of ones um, of artwork, which is awesome. It's a you know it's a great option for artists who want to go that route. Um, but additions are really important to us because they allow for collectors at different levels to buy in um, to your artworks and you know maybe a one of one you have at a certain price. Um, in addition, you can have it a lower price um, and allow for like a wider range of collectors to purchase your art and support you as an artist. Um, we're also really proud at Maker's Place that we, ha we do have a wide range of prices. Um, there's kind of something for everyone. For example, right now there's an open edition um, that went live today that's for $75 um, each. So, I mean, if you're not a whale collector, um, but you do love NFTs, there are a lot of options, um, for you to still collect and purchase NFTs. It's not just at the super high price range. Um, also we just have a super wide variety and diversity of style, um, and like kind of stages of people in their different kind of stages of, um, art journeys, I would say. So, you know, for mainstream entertainers, we've done drops with Snoop Dogg and Shakira and Patrick Mahomes is a big American football player, like really huge celebrities um, to artists in the crypto world, um, like Beeple, for example, or Javier Arez or Coldy, we did a drop with last week. Um, and then we work also with emerging artists who are just kind of entering the space and getting their bearings, um, but are still amazing, awesome artists. Um, we are definitely super passionate about helping these artists um, kind of cultivate their careers and uh, playing a role in building them up and, and getting them visibility. Um, and the last thing I would say is that we're very community oriented and we care a lot about the Web3 community at large. Um, this is why we do accelerator programs like the Equal Bytes program, um, why we're so excited to be a part of this artist sprint um, and, you know, other accelerator programs like the Africa Here, which I mentioned, um, and, and just like group community shows. So, um, yeah, community is super, super important for us. And we um, definitely value that as an important pillar um, for everything that we do. Uh, so Asha, quickly, I think the slides, it, um, it stopped on the second slide, if you are. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Is it, what, are you uh, doing the full presentation? Maybe it's it's only capturing like the, the, the editing slides, I think. Oh, okay. I was playing it. Um, but now here, I'll just go through the editing slides then instead okay. of playing that. Maybe if you could turn off the Sorry format. About that. No worries. <laughs> Thanks for letting you know. Of course, of course. If you, I think if you turn off the format, I think we could see it uh, a little bit bigger. There Perfect. we go. 
Perfect. I'll let you go. <laughs> cool. Oh my goodness. And I'm running out of time. I talk too much. Okay. I want to go quickly. Um, so I introduced myself already. You guys heard from me. Um, I want to talk about our approach to curation. As I mentioned, we are a curated platform. Um, so you have to be either invited um, or apply and be accepted to the platform. Um, however, we do want to balance this with being decentralized. We don't want Maker's Place and our staff to be the only people who are deciding who gets to go on the platform. Um, so the way that we kind of decentralize our application process is by introducing our curator program. Um, and so this is a number of people in the community um, are curators for Maker's Place. They may be artists themselves, they may be community builders, they may be collectors, um, but they're people who have been pillars to both the Maker's Place community and the NFT community at large. Um, so these curators have the ability of one, inviting other artists to the platform, um, and two, actually putting together exhibitions and drops. Um, and through these exhibitions and drops, they're able to connect collectors with um, quality art and artists that they may have not been aware of or seen before. Um, then I also want to talk about a little bit about the rare and rare digital art. Um, and just, I think that it's really important to bring this up um, because this is really something that blockchain and NFTs solve for, for digital art. Um, in the past, there was really no way of applying value to rare digital or to digital art because there was no way of establishing, um, oh, I'm so sorry, someone's coming into my room. Sorry for that. Um, so there was no way of establishing scarcity um, because there was no way of establishing provenance um, or authenticity being attached to any digital artwork. Um, but blockchain, you know, obviously has changed that. Um, but I would say, like, I think it's really important for artists to keep in mind that even though now through blockchain, we have a way to um, identify which artworks are authentic and like, therefore establishing rarity with it. Um, I think it's really important for artists to also keep in mind that rarity also applies to the way that you publish your art and the way that you approach like putting your art out into the market. Um, so definitely when you're thinking about rarity, when you're thinking about minting your first pieces and putting your art on the art market, I think it's important that you don't go crazy and, and publish tons of artwork all at once, um, that you really do try to keep it scarce and keep things scarce and, um, and just, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't publish too much all at once um, because it will kind of hurt your, your scarcity and the value of your art. Um, so really quickly, how do NFTs empower creators? Um, one thing is the rise in recognition of digital art. Um, it's provided a lot of creative freedom for artists who before were, you know, kind of limited to working for different agencies or, um, for other people and not being able to do their own visions. Um, now digital art is finally kind of becoming a legitimate form of art um, and digital artists are gaining legitimacy and creative and financial freedom. Um, democratization, there's no more gatekeeping. Um, you're able to participate in the NFT art market no matter where you are. Um, if you're in a small town where there's no art galleries and you're not able to go to art fairs, you can still be a part of this ecosystem. And I think a huge, huge one is secondary sales and royalties. Um, so on Maker's Place specifically, artists receive a 10% royalty for any secondary sale, any tertiary sale, any sale that goes beyond um, the primary sale, which is huge because in the physical art world, this is basically impossible. Um, so this is really, really something that sets NFTs and digital art apart in terms of how artists benefit. And then obviously financial incentives are a big benefit for artists. 
Um, the commissions at Makerspace, it's 15, 15% compared to 50%, um, which is what we see at, more gal at most galleries. You're expanding your audience. You can control your own pricing. Um, you don't have galleries kind of inserting their control over how you price. And you have direct interactions and enhanced relationships with collectors, fans, and other artists. Some benefits for collectors um, is that they have true digital ownership. Um, so with the blockchain, you're receiving cert certificates of authenticity. Um, there's provenance attached to artworks. Um, you know that you're getting an actual copy of, you're getting an actual copy of um, the true artwork that was created by that specific artist, not just something that was copied and pasted from the internet. You can actually kind of trace where the artwork came from. Um, it's a really great investment for investors. This example is an NFT that I myself actually own. Um, and it was a comic book NFT that was first published in August, 2020. Um, it at the time was selling for a little under $70. I um, mean, it resold on August 27th, a year later, um, for $3,500. I know I've personally received bids on mine for like $3,000 and I'm not accepting anything under $10,000. Um, so there's definitely, you know, it's an investment. I think that the biggest thing though is buy it because you love it. I don't think anyone should count on NFTs as like buying NFTs only for investing, um, but it is an added benefit. And it's a totally new way to engage with art. Like collectors never really have been able before to engage with art with movement, to engage with art that has um, been created by AI, um, that has VR components or AR components, a com completely new field and it's really exciting. Um, it's attaching new experiences to the artworks. You can actually have a huge art collection without having to fill your entire walls. You can have rotating frames, um, all of that type of stuff. And yeah, you can share it um, with the entire internet and the entire world, or you can just enjoy it privately. And you can just engage and support the art community and kind of bring us um, to the future. So yeah. And then just some examples of how you can share your art with um, the world in terms of like metaverse galleries, there's virtual galleries and crypto voxels, Decentraland, Facial, there's so many cool ones. We've had some awesome gallery shows, Maker's Place. Um, there's so many cool digital frames that are coming out. Um, I know there's a company that is called Wim that we work with, Infinite Objects. There's a lot of cool ways to engage and um, kind of have art physically on your wall if you don't want to just enjoy it through your phone or the computer. And yeah, I think the biggest thing is just that we are all a part of engaging and supporting this huge art movement and building up the next like big creative economy. Um, and it's really only the beginning. So yes, that is it. That's my presentation. Thank you all so much um, for listening. And yeah, I'm a little bit over, but if anyone has questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much, Aisha. <laughs> I tried my best in the general um, art sprint general chat to translate what you said um, as you were going. So hopefully the artist got a chance to kind of get a glimpse of like what you wanted to present um, and share to them. So based on that, I'll see if anyone has any question. Uh, 제가 제너럴 방에 최대한 이거 발표하는 거를 따라가면서 어, 번역을 최대한 많이 했는데 어, 그리고 또 이제 영어 또 이제 영어로도 이제 발표를 드셨는데 혹시 아이샤한테 질문 있으시거나 어, 궁금하신 점 있으면은 마이크 켜고 편하게 질문하셔도 되고 아니면 제레, 제너럴에다가 남기시면. 제가 번, 어, 번역이 필요하시면 도와드릴게요. And thank you, Aisha. That was that was um it was lovely to kind of go over in depth a little bit more about the benefits of a 
um, of being part of this whole ecosystem and um, the market as an artist and also being a collector. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if any questions do come up about Maker's Place, um, I know I kind of sped by a lot of stuff, but um, please feel free to reach out via DMs or tag me. I'm here on Discord. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. 네, 결 작가님. 네, 저 질문이 있는데 어, 프레젠테이션 잘 들었습니다. 어 그냥 이건 또 수작대기 없이 더 궁금한 건데요. 그 큐레이션을 통해서 작가들을 온보딩 시킨다고 하셨잖아요. 어 근데 저는 그냥 어, 궁금한 게이 큐레이터들은 이제 메이커스 플레이스 자체에서 뭐라고 해야 되지? 그냥 인하우스 큐레이터? 뭐 이런 식으로 어 같이 일을 하고 계셨던 것인지 궁금해서 그거 한번 여쭤보려고 마이크 켰습니다. Uh, so, Kier, you want me to ask for you? 제가 안, 아니요. 네, 번역 부탁드립니다. 아, 아, 오케이, 오케이. 네. <웃음> 네. Uh, so, Kier, she wanted to ask all the curators that are helping on board new artists to Maker's Place. Um, are they all in-house curators or do you guys have, like, what's the system for the curators? Yeah, so actually none of them are in-house. Um, they are all people who are within the community, um, who our team and our staff members um, identify and send invitations out to. Um, and like I said, there's kind of a mix. Um, there may be artists who have been on the platform for a long time um, or who specialize in a certain medium. Um, it may be uh, community builders who we've worked with on past projects um, or who have just really made an impact within the NFT space. Um, and it may be collectors um, who are really passionate about a certain style of art and are really well connected um, in that world. For example, we have a, a curator um, who is a, an artist, but he doesn't mint on Makerspace, but he's mainly a collector on Makerspace. Um, and he's super into um, like anime style art. And so he brings in kind of his network of artists that are doing anime. Um, we have another artist who she's very passionate about collage style art. So she brings artists um, who are within that specific medium. Um, and then there's curators who are just kind of like super open and versatile and into all different types of styles. Um, but it's really their history and background um, with the platform and like reputation in the community. Um, that is what kind of draws us to them um, to be selected as curators. But they're not a part of the official staff. Oh, thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, hopefully that that clarified it. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Aisha? 혹시 다른 분들도 혹시 질문 있으실까요? 저희가 아마 이거 이제 스프린트가 진행이 끝나고 어, 작품들을 저희가 어떤 작품들을 올리게 될지 이런 것들을 좀 하면서 또 다시 아이사랑 같이 시간을 어, 보낼 수도 있고 또 언제든지 어, 밀크스페이스에 대해서 궁금하시면 질문해 주시면 아이사랑 같이 얘기해서 어, 또 풀어나가도록 하겠습니다. Okay, I think that's that's pretty much. I think that's pretty good. I think um, if they have any questions, yeah. Again, I think it's like work hours in Korea right now. So um, if they do have any questions after. I'll try to organize them and um, get to ask you um, and then also very looking forward to see what they produce <laughs> based on like what they have what um, they've learned so far in the week and uh, looking forward to yeah develop it further with you amazing thank you so much and I'm so so excited to see the artworks that come from this and just to see this program um, progress and evolve. So yeah, thank you again, Dong Lee, for having me and thank you everyone for being here and listening.
Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Ah, 저희가 그러면 제가 어, 네, 오늘은 이렇게 하, 여기까지 <웃음> NFT 아트, 큐레이드 아트에 대한 가치에 대해서 얘기를 해봤고요. 이거를 영상을 지금 좀 작업을 해가지고 이것도 올려놓도록 하겠습니다. 지금 첫 번째 세션, 두 번째 세션, 세 번째 세션까지는 자료랑 영상 모두 다 업데이트 돼 있어서 노션에서 나중에 보시고 어 이제 프로젝트 진행하는데 어 보시고 하시면 되고요. 저희가 이따가 저녁 6시에 그때 1시간 정도 같이 음 네, 그때 다시 그 그룹 세션 오셔서 그때는 각자 가지고 계신 그냥 생각 정도 단계에 계시다라고 하면은 그 생각, 생각을 같이 공유해 주시고 그거는 그, 그, 어, 이거 뭐지? 파이널 최종 챌린지에 대해서 이제 아이디어 단계이시면 그 아이디어 단계 같이 공유해 주시고 아니면은 스, 이제 뭔가 스케치나 아니면은 정리된 이제 PDF가 있으시면은 그런 것도 공유해 주셔서 저희가 그때 다 같이 모여 있을 때 어, 리뷰할 수 있도록 한 시간 정도 동안 같이 얘기 나눠보도록 할게요. 음, 네, 그렇게 해서 진행을 하고 만약에 어, 1대1 사, 그거가 먼저 필요하신 분들은 제가 그 캘린더 링크가 조금 이상해가지고 시간이 한국 시간으로 제대로 이, 안 뜨는 것 같더라고요. 그래서 그것만 확인해 주시고 문제 있을 때에는 제너럴 방에서 저한테 편하게 말씀해 주시면 됩니다요. 오케이. 저 이제 다들 지금 바쁜 시간이실 테니까 어, 보내드리고 이따 저녁에 다시 또 한번 만나서 어, 얘기를 나눌 수 있으면 같이 공유해보는 시간 가져보도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 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 또 뵐게요. 이따 뵈요. 네, 이따 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다.